This week, we talk about when you should cut and bulk. Also, we're going to talk about the new Food Compass food healthiness rating system. What the hell is that? And hear about Dewey's CrossFit competition win. Let's get into it. You're famous, brah. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> so humble. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess I'm uh, world famous. I don't know. There's, there's, there's context around it. Yeah, we're going to get into that. Um, but before we do... I was like, why didn't you post anything about your competition? Brag, why did you brag more, you mean? And I said, why would I post? That's for she my goes, fans to do. She goes, <laughs> she goes well, I, I don't know. It's just CrossFit's your thing, and you did really well, and... Um, it's, uh, well, Matt Fraser says it's best. If you have something truly, truly worth bragging about, mm -hmm. you don't have to. Oh, because it'll just bubble up. People will do it for you. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. So, we'll get into evidently I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> right. And we'll get into that whole story. First, I saw this meme and it made me, uh, kind of laugh and... It's one of those ones where it just, I agreed, but it wasn't super funny, but <laughs> it's true. Uh, so I'll read it for the audio listeners here. In Starbucks, a guy asked about the Beyond Meat sandwich. The barista says, it's a plant-based alternative to meat. The guy says, oh, so it's a healthier version? The barista says, yes. He says, okay, I'll take that. Um, no, it's not the healthier version, quite the opposite. Yep. See that all the time. That assumption that if something's plant-based, it's healthier. And that's just what the prevailing conventional wisdom is. Right? Yeah. I, you were right. It wasn't funny. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, it's not it, it's, it's not a, even a joke. It's oh. just him observing. I thought it was supposed to be funny. Well, it's just funny. Hmm, like, not funny. Ha ha. Oh, I guess he's, doing a, face, funny. he's doing a face plant. Or face palm, so I yeah. guess he's... He's just saying, what what's up so with this dude? Right. He's just noticing this, you know, prevailing conventional wisdom out there that everyone that doesn't dig into the shit like we do just assumes that the Beyond Meat sandwich is healthier than the, you know, regular sausage or whatever they have on it. Not true. Fake I said news, this before. I, sorry, not to be... Overly disinterested, <laughs> but could you be any less interested, <laughs> Chandler? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what movie is that? That's could from you, Friends, right? Could you be any more insulting? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I was thinking of Friends because Chandler. Or no, that was uh, Chandler always says that. Yes, uh, Wayne's World. Oh, okay. When he go when his girlfriend goes, <laughs> could you be any more insulting? He goes, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, but it's the whole vegan thing and the healthier meat and the fake meat and all. And I've said this before. I say it weekly, and I'm going to say it again because I don't give a shit. It's jump the shark. I'm just tired of hearing it. Right. Just the people who just pound and it, it's it's so bad that we've t it, we've become tone deaf to it, mm. where we're just like, it's just <laughs> and it's just it, it's white noise, and you don't even pay attention to it anymore. Right. I used to read that. A year ago, I'd read that and go, oh, son of a, mm, so sick of this. <laughs> now I'm just like, just but, fly in the soup. Just get. Yes, I ignore, of course, I ignore this. If if a barista said that to me, I would just chuckle. Right. And go, whatever, just give me the meat. But a one. year ago, both of us probably would have been like, lady, you don't get it. <laughs> well, and I never, in person, never try to convince anyone because that's a losing battle. Right. You can't ever do it. Um, but, but since still, we have a podcast, I still make a smart ass comment. Since we have a podcast, that's kind of what we're here to do. Like if I was raise, aware, raise awareness, if I, if I was Jacob, yeah. first of all, I go by Jake. But if I was Jacob, I would be in line and go, um, excuse me, excuse me, <laughs> that that's not fucking true <laughs> at all. Right. Quit telling people that. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. And it makes you think how many people a day do they, do they say that to? That's oh, really the, the oh, scary she, part. She calls it the healthier version to everyone. To I literally it. everyone. Oh, yeah. 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 Without a doubt. Yeah. In fact, probably tries to suggest it. Like, I wonder if somebody says, give me the sausage, egg, and cheddar. If she goes, mm, have you, you tried? Do the, you really want to do that? Yeah. Have you tried the impossible one? Hmm? Have you seen what happens to those pigs? 
Yeah. So that's, you know, since I know you're disinterested, but since we do have a podcast and we're mm. telling the world about yeah. this, so that's your reason to be interested. <laughs> So please share more unfunny. <laughs> there you go. Now we get, now you're getting it. Okay. Well, this this next one takes it to the extreme. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Okay. This go is go on. This is a real ad. It's got to be fake. For those listening, this is a picture of Winston's that says made with 100 percent plant based menthol. <laughs> it's a plant. They're trying to. They're trying to convince you that this reminds me of like back in the 50s when they'd said, you know, five out of six doctors prefer Marlboros. Right. Yeah. So they're trying to like make you think that, give you any excuse that Winston's cigarettes are the better alternative because they're plant based or the menthol's plant based. What the hell does that even mean? This is just ridiculous. Yeah. What is menthol anyway? I don't know. It must be whatever's in the, I can't read this fine print here, but I guess menth, I mean, I've never smoked. So I know menthol is a thing that makes them sort of minty-ish, right? Right. Yeah, but sh- sure. So let's Maybe just it used to be made of nuclear waste and now it's made with plants. Well, well nuclear waste would still be vegan. <laughs> it's just so much better for you this way. I don't understand. And even the package is green. Like they're trying to use that psychological manipulation. You know, like it's healthy because it's got green in the majority okay. of the color. Okay, here's the question that's <laughs> here's the question that's dying to be asked. Out, out of every ten Winston customers, how many are dead how many now? are vegan? <laughs> right. Or how many are dead now? NASCAR used to be called the Winston Cup series. Right. <laughs> Think of the demographic, the target market that they're going after. Oh, yeah. Right, like who, like somebody that's smoking, like, ah, I need to get healthy. Well, okay, put down that first. Right. No, no, no. No, I'll no, Just no. get the plant-based Just based get ones. the plant-based. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's really what they're doing. It gives, because it gives the consumer or victim, as I <laughs> refer to them, uh, an excuse, a way to rationalize. Well, congratulations. You figured out how to get me involved enough again to be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Plant-based, boy, there's just there's just no end. Just when I think I'm out, they pull me. They back pull in. me back in. Oh, <laughs> good, yeah. So good stuff. No, it's not. <laughs> and you know that that we're one just made doomed. me chuckle because we're like, doomed as a species. <laughs> I mean, who if whoever this is working on? I mean, that's a low IQ. It's person. not. It's if, the low IQ person is whoever's in charge of that marketing campaign. I don't know. I wonder. I'd like to see the results of this campaign, you know? I'd like to see if it's even real. Yeah. Because yeah, it's try- so out there that it's got to almost yeah, that, be. Yeah, that's on like the verge the of, it could have been Photoshopped right. or Babylon B or. Right, right, yeah, exactly. right. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Let's get into this CrossFit comp. Okay. So here's a picture of. Oh, you even pulled a picture of our sign. I did. So I, I, for those listening, it's got 99 problems, but a bench ain't one. Now, our CrossFit team names, kind of like boats. They all have to have a, a punny name. Do they almost always have that? Almost always. Unless you can tell the, the lower skilled you are, the more punny or clever name you have. <laughs> well, yours is pretty damn punny. Exactly. But you guys won. So. Yeah, but we're still pretty low skilled. But <laughs> if you are like super good and you're on a team even. It just says team number six. <laughs> no, it would be like wherever your gym is. Oh, okay. So if like we're EHP, CrossFit EHP in Moorhead, and yep. it would, so it would just be that. Right. Or CrossFit Fargo or CrossFit 701. But when you get down into the lower summer levels, then it's, then you do something clever. All right. Well, I like the punny name. It's good. It makes, and appropriate. Makes it fun. Makes it fun. And, it, and ours was appropriate. So tell me about <clears throat> what this competition, like what level it was at, who was there, who were you competing against, how did you pick your team, et cetera. Oh, that's a good. Yeah, lay us, all, lay really us good. Are, you're such a lay good. You're such a good interviewer. I know. Those are all good questions. Um, I didn't want to compete, but my coach Ryan said, "I want to see you move." I think you need to get out there and, and be in a competitive environment so we kind of know where we're at. Right. Um, I can do workouts all week long, every day, all week long. 
and send him my scores and my results, but it doesn't give him a true feel or measure of where I'm at as an athlete. Because you weren't going balls out. Balls out or in front of him. Right. So this was both. This was balls out and physically in front of him watching. Gotcha. So I said, all right, fine, I'll do it. And I said, all right, who? So then this is where the strategy comes in. That's only tip of the iceberg for the strategy, though. That's mm -hmm. the fun part is the strategy when it comes to doing the, the events. That's, right, that's the fun part. In my limited experience of watching some national competitions, it's basically like you have to know what you're good at. So, you know, like how much time to waste or just to, right. uh, to bomb, which ones you can bomb out on, which ones you have to like make sure you win. Or which ones you start off fast or, right. or pace. How or, much, yeah, how to pace yourself or not. Yep, so much fun. Or that's, just finish. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the fun part. But another part of the strategy is – Picking your team. Yeah. So we've been in CrossFit competitions before where it was two men, one woman. This one was three men. So we picked, obviously, myself. No, was this – were the divisions divided by gender? Uh, yes and no. The divisions and the teams were divided by gender. So there was, there was men scaled team of three, women scaled team of three, men intermediate team of three, Women intermediate team of three, and then there was women RX. That means do it as as, as ordered. prescribed. Yep. yep. And then there was men RX, and that was it. Usually, there's a lot more. Usually, there's forty five to forty nine. So, which division were you guys? We were scaled. So that means that means entry level. Okay. Beginners. Yep. <clears throat> Me, old, and not <laughs> healthy yet. Right. And then one of our teammates has been doing CrossFit for like eight weeks. Oh. Right. So, and then the other one is Ben. He's close to my age, a little younger than me. Super old. Yeah, three years, 45. <laughs> so not super old. <laughs> but anyways, um, but Ben's super, super, super ridiculously fit, but really small. Right. Wrestler his whole life. He's 45 years old. Maybe weighs 130. Can do a lot of like chin ups, but can't throw a lot of weight around. Right. Yep. <clears throat> so we did one barbell where we had to do thrusters where you'd go down in a squat and then thrust it up over your head and back down into the bottom of a squat. Well, we had to do it with 95 pounds. That's right. like me doing it with 185. Right. For him to do it with 95. Yeah, that's tough. So I, we're like, okay, we need to, we got the newbie and then we got the little guy. But it's kind of like in the that. NBA, they don't lower the hoop just because you're short. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but in CrossFit, normally, being short works to your advantage, but that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. But Ben's little, so if we couldn't have went intermediate because those weights would have destroyed him. Right. So we were scaled. Well, we get there, and all of the workouts just let, were like, as if they said, hey, Dwayne, you want to win this competition? Why don't you go ahead and write the workouts? <laughs> and these <laughs> really? are what I want to write. So, and they were showing the picture. Is this yep. your team here? Yep. Yeah. And you can, you see me. Oh, so you know Ben's me. on the left. Yep. He's a little guy. Yep. He looks like he's my height. Yep. Last. And the other guy just started, the middle guy? Yeah. He's weeks into it. Okay. Yep. So, uh, but yeah, anyways, the, the. So they were, the workouts were prescribed for you, like. This is a really good picture of how the weekend went. I didn't even notice this until just <laughs> now when you pulled this up. Yeah. Do you know what I'm looking at? Looks like your eyes are closed or down. No. Looking down. We're standing there, and Mel came up and said, I want to take a picture of you guys after the event. Oh, yeah. Look at behind us to the left. Some guys still going? They're still going. Oh, right. You guys were done. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That's how the weekend went. Very nice. I mean, it. We got a lot of we got a lot of heat. You guys shouldn't be in this division. You're sandbagging. Oh, like you're too good. Yeah, yeah. But see, look at me. I'm fucking old. My right. <laughs> my my comment was not very mature, but I just said <laughs> someone's got to win. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> but Ugh. hindsight being perfect. Yeah, maybe we should have struggled and got our ass kicked in the intermediate with the new guy. Yeah. Um, and the little guy. Because half of the weights, we wouldn't have finished the events because he couldn't have done the weight. And then you're just out, right? Yep. So then you, if you lose the... No, you just take last. You still get to keep going. Okay. But 
That's not like the main zero national or whatever where you're right. out no. bomb out for the whole weekend or no, whatever. No, no, <clears throat> So it was a two-day event? Yeah, it was four events on f- Saturday and two on Sunday. Okay. So I didn't like that. The two on Sunday was just the their little ploy to get us back into to, to stand, stand town. I right. get it. Softball tournaments have been doing it for 50, 60 years. It's been more money. Um, so – this picture we're looking at here. What uh, what event is this? Those are the thrusters I was talking about. So this about. is where you have to, um, like, basically do a pick it up off the floor and do it above your head, and then walk a certain distance. Or, nope, you pick or, it up off the floor. You go down into a full squat, okay. front squat. Yep. So the bar's in the front. Yep. And then you thrust up, driving the bar above your head all in one motion, and then back down into the squat, and then back up. And how many of those? We had to do thirty wall balls. Okay. 20 calories on that bike that's right behind me, Eesh. and then 10 of those. Yikes. And then we wait for the other two guys to do it, and then we do it again. Oh, my God. I fell on the ground, and I looked up at the crowd, and I said, fuck me. <laughs> that was the worst workout I've ever done. That sounds brutal. It was. I was laying on the ground, and because we were done way before the other teams, too, this time. Yep. So we were waiting, <clears throat> and I was laying on the ground just going like this. Come on, quads. Just to get them to stop yeah. hurting. Yeah, yeah, it hurts so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but so funny. how did the little guy do because he had to do the same weight yeah he he broke him up oh yeah, he did like to... one or two at a time and then yeah. shake it out and, right or i just did all 10 which Crazy. is how which is how it should be yeah you should just do all 10 yeah so how much weight was that just 95 and then what was the rx division 135 oh damn mm-hmm. yeah that's way harder yeah <laughs> and then 115 was intermediate. Okay. So 95, 115, 135. So this this picture is awesome because that look on your face says pain. You're like, come on, bitch. Yeah, I had to do so tw- 12. Pick, pick it up and walk or pick nope. it up a bunch, bunch of times nope. or what? Pick it up off the floor like this. So it's a big medicine, like a and sandbag, right? And then so they see where it's like right here? Yep. And then over your shoulder. Oh, okay. So I'm throwing it up and as how much does that, that weigh? Hundred pounds. Oh shit! So I had to do twelve of those. And that's the scaled version. Yeah, the RX was one hundred and fifty. <laughs> wow. But I had to do a hundred of them, and I did all of them for a hundred of them. No, 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 hundred pounds. Oh, but I had to do well. Wait, sixty. Oh wow! I had to do twelve for five rounds. Wow! And I did every one of them for our team for all five rounds. So you can do that. You can the, the strong guy can. It do. All depends on how it shakes out and what they okay. allow. Sometimes they say everyone Has everyone do must do whatever. each movement. Yeah. Right. So or otherwise, you can pick and choose. Like the strongest break, person can do this one. And, and what that's called in the fine print is uh, can break up any way you want. Or the light guy can do all the chin ups or whatever. And that's what Ben did. We went back down, and the last movement was pull ups. Yeah. And it was thirty pull ups, and Ben did them all and broken without stopping. <laughs> Nice. That's when they're like, dude, you're in the wrong division. Yeah. Well, for that. <laughs> right. For that exercise. Yeah. But that's but, why we made a good team. Right. Cause you and can. Levi was, was not skilled. Yeah. But he was fit, and he was really comfortable going into the pain cave, where he <laughs> could go in there where it hurt, and he could just sit in it. And that's what your face looks like right here for all those. <sighs> that, that's, that's a pain face right there. Yep. Everybody make sure if you're watching or listening to this, go go to uh, YouTube and watch this because you can see Dewey's pain <laughs> face. The funny part is that my, when I came out, my adrenaline got the better part of me, and I just started grabbing him like this. Instead of like bear hugging it, I just grabbed him with my hand. <laughs> just pinch him. And I went like this. <laughs> And I go upstairs into the athlete area, and this one gal goes, hey, you're the guy that was throwing the sandbag like 20 feet over your head. <laughs> I said, yeah, I was a little amped up to start. Okay, so here's uh, here's you on a rower. Yep. We had to do – that was to open the comp- – the event two. Event one was running. We actually had to run a mile and a half. Wow. But that was event two. We opened it with a 60-meter – or 60-calorie row. Okay. And then me and Levi, he's already – bent over in the background there because he already did his 30 <laughs> calories so but again i'm long and tall yep. levi's the same height and he's long and tall mm-hmm. we were off that rower and onto our next movement and these guys were still breaking it up into like tens right where we broke it up 30 30 and these guys were doing 10 10 10, 10 and it's all those transitions mm-hmm. it all adds up and they're trying to save their energy <clears throat> right but they don't understand that 
it's waste more time mm -hmm. when you have all those little transitions. Sure, if you can do it. But the thing is, if you can't do it, then you can wear out and then you're done. Yeah, I mean, it's yep. damned it's if you so do. So much strategy. Know. Now, here's another pain face. Yep. Look at that. That was a lot of pain there. <laughs> Not really pain, but it was heavy. Like your teammates going, come on, bro. You yeah. can do it. Yeah, that looks heavy. That was. So, what's this one now? What's this that's, exercise? That's a high hang clean. Okay. So, you know what a clean is, right? Yep. From the floor, yep, and up then to, up, up to here, up yep. to here. Well, a high hang is here, and then to here. Oh, okay. You don't get to start from the floor. So you pick it up, and then you have to just do this, like. Well, you pick it up, and then you go to above the knees, okay. and then up. Oh, so you don't get the full swing exactly. So that's a little harder. Yep. Or and it just I was, works different muscles because you're not uh, going all the way from the floor. But it's just, yeah, it's both. It's <laughs> you harder. don't get the momentum, but then it's harder, yeah. But I was pissed because they were running behind. So you see the gals in the back. Mm -hmm. What they did is they said, oh, we're all going to do it at once. And um, that wasn't the plan. So, and they were like, what do you mean? Well, the, the scaled women and the scaled men are going to share the floor and we're going to knock out two heats at once. Oh. So we run out there, and I'm like, okay, oh, great. Don't get to warm up. Because right. we were waiting. While the women were doing this, we would have been practicing and warming up to build up to our weight. Right. So we had to go out on the floor cold. Right. And I said, they're like, what are we going to do now? And I said, well, my goal was 225. I said, which is a lofty goal, mm -hmm. um, but that was warm. So we got to change it up now. And that was 225. Mm -hmm. So I ended up doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. So. It worked out. And then I'm like, well, I was pissed because I'm like, I felt, that felt light. Oh, I'm wow. like, I, fuck, I could have done 255, maybe 265. Wow. And, but here's the strategy part. When I was all done and said, and I'm pissed off about it, we went and they posted the scores and I looked at the leaderboard on an app mm -hmm. and we won by over 100 pounds. Right. So I'm like, so, so I didn't yeah. need to do no, 255. Yep. I could have just got hurt. Exactly. Yep. So a lot of strategy that goes into it. That's Here's another. that right there okay, yep. is right before the last one. Okay. But a lighter weight. Yep. That's where I started at 185. So you have to get a certain amount of weight over like, and then you can divide it up wherever you want. So you could do 50 pounds and just a lot more times. Nope. It's, you can build up, but it's your heaviest weight is your score. Okay. So I started gotcha. at 185. I started at 185. And how many times do you have to do it? We get two minutes. Okay. So you can do it as many times as you want within two minutes, and your score within those two minutes is whatever the heaviest weight you lifted is. Okay. So that was 185. I threw that right up, and I'm like, okay. And these guys were like, that was too easy. You got to go harder. I'm right. like, yep, yeah, I'm going to jump up. But I just wanted to get a score on. That's the strategy, too. Get yeah. a score on the books. Yep. Because you don't want to go out there and go 275. And then spend two and minutes missing it and yeah. get zero. Yeah. You got to get something. But then you realized you, after you, in hindsight, you had blew past them so far that you wouldn't have needed to exert that much energy. Right. I could have stopped there. and Could have stopped. And then now we save your energy for the next yep. exercise. So there's some strategy there too. Because you want to win, but not by so much that you consume all your energy. Correct. But it, that's the last event of the day too. Yeah. So. <laughs> right. So here's your winning shot. Yep. Who's that other Ryan? That's dude. my coach, Ryan. Oh, that's coach. Yep. Okay, cool. And he's holding up number one because he actually won the men's individual RX. Oh, nice. Yeah. Awesome. That yeah, was good for him. He kind of ran away with it. So how, the Tundra game. So where, where was that held? CrossFit Tundra in Grand Forks. Oh, Grand Forks. Okay, yep. cool. Awesome. So good times. Yeah. Good times. That's no more cool, scaled. Man. So. <laughs> no more scaled. So now if you're going to go into it, and enter the same competition, but not scaled, would you take the same dudes or would you try to get? No, nope. I would go with three big dudes or nope. how do you? Three well-rounded, but just more scaled. Right. Yep. Strategy. It's a big piece of it. Oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Yep. I mean, Levi probably in a in a year or so we'll be easily be able to do an intermediate yep but he's still green yeah ben will always struggle with that weight just which is just physics which is he's yeah just exactly not it's not his fault i mean he's a, he's not gonna make the nba either he's a like all state wrestler as a yeah. kid and he's the west fargo wrestling coach i mean yep. he's a hell of a hell of an athlete yeah just not everybody has a body type for yeah. every sport yep 
you know. So, but he'll be. Um, he would still be. Depends on the workouts again. Yeah, right. I mean, if we go into well, it, that's the thing too. Is the program ends that's up a being big part all of, barbell? Well, that's a big part of CrossFit is the surprise of it all. Like you don't know in advance. You can't prepare because you don't know exactly what they're going to do. You have a feeling for the types of exercises CrossFit does, right? But you don't know exactly what they're going to no list. Never. It's that, it's one of the and nationally that's one of the big reveals they do every day is here's today's workout it's one of the one of the things and you know if it's running a marathon or if it's benching a bunch or what one year they had to row a marathon (laughs) right literally yeah they had to row 26 so you don't know if your particular strengths are going to be dominant or super if it's going to be your total weaknesses yeah yeah so it's it's one well one of the the sayings in crossfit is what we're training for is the unknown and the unknowable right so that's what they try and spring on you at competitions is shit you never would have known. Yep. Like running. Mm-hmm. Nobody expected to show up to Grand Forks Saturday morning at 8 o'clock and run a <laughs> sprint a half a mile or a mile and a half. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, good job. Thank you. It's, it's super, super, super addictive. I mean, the first thing I did was like, all right, when's the next one? Right. Start well, checking the calendar. You, especially when you win. Right. Start checking the calendar. <laughs> How much time do we have to train? And then we end up like <laughs> Brian and Coach K at EHP are like, yeah, you're done competing, by the way. <laughs> I'm like, oh, fine. <laughs> Less competition, more practice and training. I'm like, all right, I get it. I don't have to like it, but I get it. Yep. All right. Awesome job. Okay, this brings us to our Thank next you. thing here. I saw this. I saw a few tweets on this today. and there, Apparently there was some study released where um, – they release this thing called, uh, I forget what exactly it's called, the okay, food the Tufts Food Compass, and I have it up on the screen here. It's a novel nutrient profiling system that assesses the healthfulness of foods. And it gives, and it attributes a score to, ver- you know, a lot of different foods. And it popped up on my, my radar because Ted Naiman noticed it, and he was basically saying... <laughs> Every oil on margin has a higher score than lean beef. Like, get out of here. Get out of here with that bullshit uh, was, you know, his implied response. So, um, okay, so breaking new uh, breaking research. Food Compass, a new nutrient profiling system, objectively ranks foods from most healthy to worst. Users updated sci- uh, uses updated science, protective and harmful attributes, processing, and more. How does your favorite food score? And this is just another one of these... <laughs> Your face. <laughs> this is another one of these things you're just like, what the fuck? Because, and then of course Ted Naiman, who can you can't argue, no, is super freaking healthy. Is like, why is oil and margarine above lean beef? You idiots, right? <laughs> so then he he highlights. He even did a little face emoji. I don't even know what that means. It's like a. I think it's a. Oh, <laughs> like a. Like, mm, I'm just gonna, okay, I can't or, even say Or anything. maybe a wah, wah, wah. Yeah, kind of, <laughs> exactly. So <clears throat> so the food compass score of all these various processed oils is like 90 to whatever. And then he's got beef steak, 33. So he's basically saying that what their claim is that lean beef is a lower score than margarine or oil. Give me a break. That's bullshit. So, okay, let's get to the bottom. Who sponsored this? Right. That's the thing. Is, <laughs> well, let's read some of the comments here. Okay, so then. Um, <clears throat> I don't even know what that is. Okay, so. <laughs> objectively, doesn't like mean what guy. he thinks it means. Right. That Chris <laughs> Cornell guy is good. He's a good follow. You should follow him before you scroll by him. All right. How do I do that? Can I do that while I'm still? Yep. Oh, oh, you already yeah. are. Okay, and then uh, shameful. They should know better. They should act better. <laughs> Yep. Their compass is definitely broken. Perhaps in their world this happened. <laughs> and then the polls got reversed. Mm-hmm. That's good. Uh, I hope it goes from lowest to highest for health. Right. <laughs> just like the food pyramid, I inverted it and got myself I was gonna healthy. Say, she had 40 pounds. I was just going to say, maybe they're reading it upside down. That's kick-ass. It really is disturbing when this, what is the science behind the scoring? Also, is it hard, it's hard to ignore the pushing of a vegan agenda here. Uh, big surprise there. Right. 
It's quite absurd and unscientific to use observational data as recommendation for what is harmful or healthful, but that's nutritional science for you, isn't it? <laughs> no cricket paste? Disappointed. I'm sure it would have ranked 91. <laughs> cricket paste. Is that like ground up crickets or what? Mm -hmm. Yikes. This, there's cricket <clears throat> protein. Oh, yeah. Powder protein. I've heard about that, yeah. Makes sense. I just mentally, that's, that's a tough one. Um, there's no way you'd ever be able to notice. Otherwise, well, it wouldn't be marketable. Well, yeah. Maybe if you mix it in with my oatmeal or something. Right. <laughs> New like nutrient chia profiling system. Are these chia seeds? Right. No. It starts with a C. <laughs> New nutrient profiling, nutrient profiling system, most comprehensive and science-based data to date, clears up confusion to benefit consumers, policymakers. Trust the science, bro. <laughs> Canola, soy, corn, sunflower, and cotton oils plus margarine should not be seen as food. They are edible poisons. There we go. So that's a lot of the responses. Of course, under Ted Naiman's profile, that's what you'd expect. Now let's take a look at this actual... Um, thing here. Okay, so the Tufts Food Compass. All right. So why is the new? Why is this new nutrient profiling system different? Nutrient profiling system NPS aimed to discriminate healthfulness of foods for front of package labeling, warning labels, taxation. Mm -hmm. I don't like where this is headed. Mm -hmm. Company ratings and more. Wow. So again, this is. You can already see down the road. This is a way of penalizing animal production animal agriculture right because they're going to slap a unhealthy label on that as according to this dude and then make it tax it more because and, it's like and, cigarettes and leave twinkies alone yep right because they contain shit tons of oil and margarine and crap right. and those you know there's going to be some absurd shit on this list like twinkies yeah i wonder where twinkies are and, and what are they higher than right <laughs> oh my god brutal dude it just pissed me off dude <laughs> Apparently. Okay. Existing NPS often assess relatively few nutrients and ingredients, utilize inconsistent criteria across food categories, and have not incorporated newest science. We have developed a novel NPS, Food Compass, to incorporate a broader range of food characteristics, novel attributes, and uniform scoring principles with demonstrated content, convergent, and discriminant validity. Well, they sound smart. You know, if you're reading this and you haven't experienced a lot of these things that we have i mean why wouldn't you not just take this at its word so they have a so the the source is good job yeah so so then it says what they're made up of nutrient ratios vitamins minerals food-based ingredients additives processing specific lipids fiber and protein and phytochemicals and then it uh talks a little bit more okay so then it shows a little graph on how the, the scores are achieved. Basically, it's balancing all those items out, assessing an amount each one, and that adds up to a cumulative score. So, okay, domain scores are summed to create a final food compass score, FCS. I just from, can't get past what this costs. That's all I'm thinking about. <laughs> right. It's who paid for all this. Well, especially if, Nonsense. They, especially if they convince someone to apply this label to like every food eventually is what, which I assume is their goal. Well, see, that's, what's going to piss me off. If, if, if hostess paid for it, I don't care. <laughs> right. But if we did, mm -hmm. no, we're going to have words. Okay. Domain scores are summed to create a final food compass store score or FCS ranging from one least healthy to a hundred most healthy for all foods and beverages. Current validity was confirmed by assessing nutrients, food, ingredients, and other characteristics of public health concern. <sighs> God. Okay. So now. <laughs> Serenity now. <laughs> no, I want to see. Okay, where the hell can I? I want to see the actual list. Like, where the hell's the list? Talk amongst yourselves while I look. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, just show me the freaking, show me the big. Okay, current work, our data. I don't know. I'm just going to click randomly. Comparison of foods by food compass score within categories. Okay, well, it's beverages, grains, fruits. Okay, I don't want to see that. I want to see the giant list of, like, all the shit, right? Like, even leaning in, I can't see that. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay. Well, that's just yeah, I want to see the category. giant. Yeah. I don't know. Well, let's go back to Ted's here. We can at least look at... Right. Okay, so 
Okay, this is all the margarines, oils. And those are all like canola oil has a 90. Remember, this goes from one to 100. So according to their score, canola oil is almost the healthiest thing you can eat. <laughs> or put in your engine. <laughs> right. Wow. Margarine it still is a 47. Okay. Margarine like spread is a 39. So all these, all these margarine, margarine like spread, Thousand Island dressing, sesame dressing, cottonseed oil, all these horrible vegetable oils are higher than lean only beef, 33. It gives beef a 33. And all those margarines were higher, including canola oil was a 90. What the fuck? I mean, that is insane. So now you're going to get susceptible people out there going, well, I guess I better skip the beef and eat some sh more shit with canola oil in it. Skip the ribeye and just take shooters of canola oil. <laughs> right. Well, according to this study, you'd be better right. off. Right. You'd be more healthy by just eat, drinking a bunch of freaking canola oil. Oh, my God. These people are nutty, man. Nuttier than squirrel shit. Okay, so let's check this out. Okay, ranking healthfulness of foods from first to worst. Uh, food compass. Yeah, I want to know who that was behind this shit, right? Like who's, you know, who's sponsoring this shit? Who is behind the Tufts food compass? You know, one person pointed out it was a vegan agenda, but that could just be anecdotal. I don't know if they're actually... You know, who's actually behind this? It's usually at the bottom and the super fine print. Right. About Tufts Now. Let's see what that says. <clears throat> Tufts Now, launched by University Relations Division in February 2011. The university is a one stop site for news. What university? I don't know. Tufts? Is that a, is that a university? Oh, University Relations Division of the paper or the media company. Yeah. Tufts on Twitter. Tufts must be an acronym. Yeah, I don't know what it's for, but... It says Tufts University. Hmm. Tufts in the news. Yeah, it's all just a bunch of kind of health-related stuff. Tufts Public Health. I don't know. Yeah, it's got a something university, something, something. I don't know what it is. We're not going to waste everyone's time figuring no. it out. But, um, but yeah, that's something Ouch. to dig a little deeper in is find out who's behind this, who sponsored this, who's pushing to make sure that canola oil gets a 90 and beef gets a 33. <laughs> Literally three times less healthy than canola oil. Give me a break. Wow. Okay, where were we here? Let's see if we can see the... <clears throat> okay, so here's an example. That just gives a few random ones. Okay, raspberries, raw, 100. So that's according to them. You know, I don't necessarily think raspberries are unhealthy, so I'm not shitting on them for giving them a good score. Mm -mm. Um, but according to this, you know, you just eat a shit ton of raw raspberries, you're good to go. I mean, there's just no context in this because it... You know, it doesn't say, because all these things are dependent on the others, right? If you ate just raspberries, that's not healthy. But if you ate, you know, some ribeye and some raspberries, thumbs up. Right. You know? Absolutely. Because <clears throat> then, you know, you're balancing out your protein and the, it's all the macros, what you're taking in. Or as I'm together. learning, if you're obese, probably make it raspberries and a tenderloin. Right. Or some chicken or. Yep. 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 Okay, you got see. enough fuel, dude. Okay, so almonds salted, 91. So all, according to this, almonds are three times healthier than beef. <clears throat> and so much And coffee whole, is a 73. So much for that whole salt thing. <clears throat> yeah, right? <laughs> according to this, coffee is a 73, <laughs> more than double the health score of beef. Sweet potato chips, 69. Okay, chicken breast, 61. Okay, I'll, um, I'm down with that. And turkey or chicken burger is 
a 50. I don't know how that's less healthy than chicken breast, but peanut butter and jelly sandwich, white bread, 35. That's higher than beef, dude. I mean, it's almost the same, but still. You telling me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on white bread? bread, On 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 white bread is... Peanut butter and jelly on a donut. Is even close to beef? Right. Give me a break. And pizza, extra meat, thick crust is a 25, so that's just under beef. What would the liver king say? (laughs) He'd wipe his ass with this. Right. He would print out this study just to wipe his ass with it. (laughs) Okay, so instant noodle soup has a one. So we found the the least healthy thing. Pudding is a one. Pudding, ready to eat, flavors other than chocolate, fat-free, one. It's fat-free, though. Yeah. Now that's, I mean, that's one where they're right. Okay, right. Pu- pudding is useless. Yep. There's nothing for you. No. Wow. I mean, how many people are going to fall for this? That's that's the scary part. You know, especially if this starts popping up on labels. Oh. Food compass score. Because, I mean, I'll give them, they've packaged this nicely. Because when you give it just the whole, you know, hey, what's the food compass score? And it compares all foods to all other foods. That makes it super simple. Hey, that's a 40. We're good. Get it. Exactly. Well, what is it? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. That's 40. Yep. Oh, this one's a 70. You'll get get 20 of those. Mm-hmm. Buy extra canola oil. Get more margarine. Oh, but don't don't get the beef, though. Get a peanut butter and jelly sandwich instead on but, white bread. But the, 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 the super, super dogmatic anti-vegan crowd loses me when they have tuna at four. Who does? On here. Tuna salad and light mayo. That's 73. Oh, gotcha. Right. So it's not, can't strictly be a vegan agenda. No. Right. Yeah, that's true. It could be a pescatarian agenda. Yep. Yeah, because they wouldn't put tuna that high. No. And chicken at a 61 right. either. Yeah, so maybe it's not vegans. Maybe that was just somebody just yeah, right. ranting. Right. You know, we have no confirmation of that. <laughs> but I, I do want to find out who's who's sponsoring this and who's, who's, the, who's pushing for, for this. For sure. I mean, if I was to guess, it's got to be somebody in the food industry that probably makes some of those oils. <laughs> it's not. It's not the. It's not ranchers. It's not. I can the, tell you that. It's not the statin drug companies. <laughs> oh, that'd be the perfect evil conspiracy. Oh, dude, we need to. What causes more, more, more use of our product? Right. Let's let's get them to. Oh God, yeah, that would be perfect. Wow. Okay, crazy. Could you imagine what, what we could report to our shareholders if we had people mainlining <laughs> fucking... Mainlining canola oil? Canola oil oh, on God. a daily. <laughs> crazy, man. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I saw this, and when, when Naaman, you know, posted it, my, my antenna went up like... Oh, oh for this, sure. This is not good. And he's not a big link guy, so you no. knew it means something. Yeah, if he's, if he's if his, you know, panties are in a bunch over it... right. You know, then he's definitely not uh, down with this. And if it, and if you or your study makes his radar, it's not going to end well. <laughs> oh no shit! Not it's going to be a bad day to be you. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to dig some more and find out find out who's you know who's behind this because I think that needs to be done. So I got yeah. Figure, figure what was it they, Tufts? Yeah. Yeah, T U F T S now. Tufts now. Not so tufts. <laughs> yeah, crazy. All right. So that's that. No, no, it's no. craziness. It is. All right. So we're going to get into this cutting and bulking thing. Yeah. Uh, so people are not going to like what I have to say. <laughs> but I don't see how that's any different from any other week. Could you be any less interested? <laughs> That's what you're going to say to them. Okay, so you sent me this article. No, could you be any more wrong <laughs> about cutting and bulking? Okay, so I got I got my own article about this too, and then you sent me this one. So basically, the whole debate is well. First, we we should explain like what bulking and cutting is. I'll explain it from my amateur perspective, okay. and you can s- let me know what you uh, and then what I'll say correcting. what it really is, right? <laughs> Okay, so in my mind, how I've seen it just in YouTube videos and bodybuilders talking about it, they always they do what they call like a dirty bulk, 
So they just basically hoover everything in sight while they're working out hard. Just uh, hang on, let me finish my amateur ex- understanding. They hoover everything in sight while working out like a fucking maniac for, I don't know, six months, a year, whatever, and just try to pack on as much muscle as they possibly can. And then competition time comes and they go, okay, I got, I built up the muscle. Now I need to strip all this fat away. And then they go into the cutting phase and they basically limit their calories massively under eat calories, the massive caloric restriction and start dropping fat and they're, and get down to like their competition level four percent where they're just in pain and their dick doesn't work they can barely stand upright the hair starts falling out but they look lean did i win you win the <laughs> spot on book definition of what everyone thinks it is mm-hmm. but well there's some certain there's some there's a certain amount of accuracy in your statement based on a competitive physique athlete right but i'm thinking in terms of everyday joes and janes who want to bulk and cut or not just savage animals like they're not just bodybuilders it's like hey you know what they do everything to the extreme this year a, a typical client would call me and say this year i went in we 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 were in a caloric deficit we caught all winter long i went into beach season with a nice six pack, toned, but kind of thin. Mm. Not a lot of muscle mass. Not a lot. Not a lot of definition. It's like the old T Nation meme where it says, "Traps are the true test of strength." <laughs> Any skinny nerd can have abs. <laughs> or you, you don't. You don't look like a bodybuilder. You look like you just did a finished a juice cleanse. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, so. That person could also be interested in bulking and cutting. It doesn't have to be a competitor. So, but the here's where the good and the bad. Mm-hmm. The good is the good news is when you cut like that, or bulk like that, or maintain like that, the difference between the far end of the cut and the far end of the bulk, and then the maintenance in the middle is only the difference of a couple hundred calories. Mm. Right. It really is. Whereas a lot of the bodybuilders go extreme. Way extreme. Because they need to get to 3%. Yep. You look badass on the beach, or on the sandbar at your lake. But horrible you, way to live. You don't need to yeah. be that lean. And even they only do it. They dip down into that. They dip down into that for like four or five days at most. Right. Then they're right back out. Right. Because they can't live like that. It's unsustainable. If you, you want to show up, it's, it's, it's the middle of October, end of October, third two thirds away through October. If you want to show up at the beach at the lake next year, 20, 31st <laughs> of the way through October. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> at the wizard. <laughs> if you want to look, if you want to be that guy. Yeah. So all the people out there right now saying it's October, I have all the way until June ish before, because May 31st Memorial day, not a lot of shirts off. Right. It's still pretty chilly. So you say you got till June. So you got a good eight months. Plenty of time to get super ripped. It, it really is yeah. if you're if you're dedicated. Mm-hmm. Well, here's the thing: to look super buff and ripped, and <laughs> super buff and ripped by that time equals probably 10, 11 percent body fat percentage. Yeah, not right. three. Yeah, right. And you'll look if you're at 10, 11 percent. Or maybe even nine people would be like, holy shit, what did you do? Yeah, you're looking better than everybody else. Everybody. Yeah. No, I, I, Unless you're at a cross a competition, you're looking better than everybody else. <laughs> if you're just at the regular beach. Right, right. Oh, yeah. So my point is. That's the good side of, of the relative fatness of the population. No. It's easy to excel. Right, right. right. <laughs> but the thing is, okay, but let's say, all right, I'm, I'm fumbling my way through this, so just mm-hmm. bear with me. I, there will be a point. I couldn't be less interested. <laughs> I think you could. So if you get to 10% this summer and then you maintain all summer long, that probably means maybe 200 
250 calories. Right. Extra. Yeah. That doesn't mean, boom, look at this. Doesn't now mean, I get to eat blueberry yeah. muffins every day for yeah, breakfast. Doesn't mean then go the fuck back to the way you right. did before you right. cared. And then, yeah. so let's just say you do it perfectly. The the maintenance level feels like horrible deprivation to your average American. 100%. Yeah, that's the the sad truth. Yep. <laughs> is the maintenance is. That's why nobody's like that. Right. <laughs> so here's the sad reality is in order to go from cutting to, all right, I'm perfect. I'm exactly where I want to be. Let's spend the summer here. All right, let's go to maintenance. Yep. So we're going to add 250 calories. That's not much. That's two bananas. Yep. <laughs> now we're in maintenance mode. Mm -hmm. Let's just say you have unbelievable discipline and you can maintain that 250 calories for the whole summer. Awesome. Now you come see me back to me and you say, all right, Dwayne, I did, I, I'm in maintenance. I had a fun summer. Everyone went, holy shit, look at you. You look fabulous. It was great, right? And now it's time. I want my triceps to be a little bigger. I need some traps. Time to put some muscle time to put on. Some yep. mu let's build. Yep. Yep. Let's build some muscle. I want to bulk. Okay, let's bulk. Now lose the fucking delusions of grandeur of French toast and chocolate milk and steaks and, and French fries and just... Again, that, that difference Uber, from maintenance to building is negligible. Just another 250 or something. Exactly. Right. 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 Still feels like massive deprivation to your average American. Right. So <laughs> it's everyone who says, all right, I made it through the summer, ripped, I'm going to bulk, ends up just getting fat. Oh, yeah. Right. Because you don't need a huge surplus of calories mm -hmm. to no. build muscle. No. You need to, uh, you. Truth be told, you need some. and if you read this, you'll figure it all mm -hmm. out. Yep. You do need to be in a surplus. Yeah, you do. But you can maintain mm -hmm. in a deficit. Yep. Yeah, that's what... Uh, and that's where I'm at now. That's crazy. Is maintaining in a deficit. Yep. So this talks about the P ratio. Yep, so this is an interesting article. So. Get your heads out of the gutter. Yeah, it's... <laughs> It's pretty, you know, this is pretty in-depth article. It talks of a lot because we're very in-depth. Um, yeah, okay. Fat-free proportion of the body weight gain change as a function of the initial mass. It's a pretty scientific article, but good for those weightlifting nerds out there who want to know about this. Right. Now, I had this article. This kind of sums it up a little bit. It basically says what you said, just in a more, you know, appeal to your average Joe Cubicle kind of way. So basically he says... He talks about the wrong way to do it. The problem that most people do is they overeat and they just get fat because the problem here's, and here's the basic thing uh, here. And here's the headline that made the most sense to me. Weight gain can happen fast, but muscle growth can't that, that to me, that sums up the whole problem because when all these people are dirty bulking and just hoovering everything in sight, all they're packing on is fat. Mm -hmm. And no matter what, that muscle growth is going to be slow, no matter what you do. Mm-hmm. So that's why you're saying the difference between maintenance and grow and bulking is not that much. I once took a picture on my dining room or my kitchen counter island or whatever it's called. Yep. And I took a picture of two meals. One was maintenance. One was bulk. And one had like it looked like the same fucking thing. Yeah, and I, just a little bit of extra something on the wall. Right. It wasn't the. Kid on it's not on, lean chicken breast versus an entire pizza, right? Exactly, which, that's how people approach it. They do, it. oh, yeah, it, it's not. I'm bulking, it's not. Uh, you're not, <laughs> you're not Emilio Estevez in the Breakfast Club <laughs> unpacking packing that bag of food. <laughs> that's not how it works. You're just gonna get fat, right? So, to me, that's sentence right there weight gain can happen fast, but muscle growth can't. No matter what you do, the muscle packs on slow. Yep. But and you can gain and and lose fat much more quickly, way muscle. more quickly. So, as a consequence, what most people end up doing is overeating, and then the the and here it says, okay, if you attempt to exceed these limits and gain weight faster, the excess weight being gained will always be body fat, not additional muscle. But that's the whole point. I try to tell right people there. all the time: you're not you're not eating your muscle no. if you're going to if you're going to in a in a deep caloric deficit. Mm -hmm. You're not losing your muscle. No. Nope. You might exactly. lose some over nine months. 
Yeah, when you're, if you're cut in a deep cut or whatever. Yeah. So <clears throat> he talks about clean bulking, and then he says, I don't like that term. I don't like the term smart bulking. I like lean bulking. Lean so, bulking is spot on. Dirty bulking is it. bullshit. Dirty Dirt. bulking is the excuse. It's the excuse. It's just like yep. dirty keto. Yep. It's just the excuse to eat bacon six times a day. Well, here's the other thing, too, because, you know, people typically flop between cutting and bulking, right? You're never kind of static. You're well, always no, kind of doing one. For the same reason, even the average Joe who just wants to look good on the sandbar wants to ultimately get bigger packs. Yep. Or Because you're always in maintenance, you're not going to put on any size. Right. So you do have to kind of alternate between these two phases. And there's nothing wrong with it. Right. As long as they're subtle. Here's the other problem. Okay, everybody that starts with a bulk when they should be starting with a cut because they're already too beefy. Right. Yeah, you got plenty of energy to go on. <laughs> right. So here he says, be lean enough to start. So a lot of guys are starting. And he, oh, here's where it gets brutal. He says, men should be 10 to 15% body fat. Okay, everyone your clients is over that. By, a, by double. Right. So you're not bulking first. Do a cut You've down already. to that, then Start bulking. And let's spend some time there. <laughs> right. But so that's the other yeah, you know, kick in the sack. You've just spent 28 years bulking, bro. Yep. <laughs> you're, so bul- you're bulked. That's the, uh, the bulking achieved. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> level <Yeah>. expert. <laughs> level expert. Bulking level unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. got all the cheat codes yep. for bulking. Right. Good job. So everybody, well, I'm going to bulk. No, no. Start with the cut. Get down to the 10 to 15%. Then worry about, you know, the bulking. Dude, if I, you wouldn't believe, well, you probably wouldn't believe it. You've been in the space long enough now. Mm-hmm. The amount of dudes that tell me, whoa, that's my calories. <laughs> but bro, I don't want to lose my muscle. <laughs> Fuck off. You're not going to lose muscle. Jeez. <laughs> yep. I still want to keep my bulk, my, you know, my muscle mass. You, if you still way you do that is if you stop working out. Right. Because then it will start to atrophy, especially if you're fucking old like me. Old and cutting. Right. So, yeah, if you stop working out, it'll go away because <laughs> muscles need to be. But stop thinking that all that tightness and mass is muscle. Right. Oh, yeah. Just because your, no. your T-shirt sleeve <laughs> flexes out a little bit. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's muscle, dude. Especially if it's tight in the gut and not in the chest. Right. Then you, then you, then you got it all wrong. And especially if it looks like the hood of a 98 Pontiac left out in a hailstorm. That's not muscle. <laughs> That's good. I don't even know what that means, but I like it. Well, it's that <laughs> hail damage. That cellulite dimples. Okay. That's not muscle. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> oh, shit. That's funny. They, where they're... That's when the people wear their UFC <laughs> shirts. That's that one. Meme. What's that one? Your, that, UF, your it used shirt to be, used to be Ed Hardy, but then now it's Tap Out. Not, well, Tap Out. I guess there's a few of these oh. brands that everyone always wears. I'm just thinking of the meme where it says your shirt says UFC, but your body says KFC. KFC. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Classic. Okay, so here it says the ideal rate of weight gain. Men aim to gain between one to two pounds per month. Women half a pound to a pound. In relative speaking, what's a safe weight loss, fat loss? One to two pounds a week. Right. Because Way easier to lose fat, fat than gain muscle. Exactly. Yeah, because, I mean, you're, you're, it's a slow build when you're putting on the muscle. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's why people get frustrated. They quit. Yep. You know, because it's you almost can't see it. And but I, that's why it takes people coming up to me that haven't seen me in a year going, dude, you've like, been yeah. working out. Right. Because it took... A year mm-hmm. or whatever, you know, it's been eight months or whatever, me working out solid for that entire time for anybody to even notice. Right. But they weren't saying that the first month or the second month. I mean, it took all that time just to put on any any size, any noticeable size and at all. one time when I got really lean, this was a long, long time ago. This was before I even got fat. But I got really lean. I got super obsessed. Go figure. I know, big surprise. <laughs> But I got super obsessed and I got super, super lean. And I ran into a guy that I used to see at the gym all the time. And he said, Oh, dude, you look good. You look, quit lifting and just start Ooh, doing cardio. And slam. I'm like, No, I'm actually way stronger than I've ever been. But you were just lean. People look small with clothes on. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's and I did. Thing. I looked, I looked thin. I would say 
like that r- guy that was on your CrossFit team, the wrestler, like wrestlers yeah. in general with clothes on, like a wrestler in a suit looks like a wimp compared to like an old football player who's fat in a suit. Oh, that guy on my team, he takes his shirt off. He's got like a 14 pack. <laughs> right. And it, yeah. Right. I mean, proportionately, so he, he looks jacked. Body fat wise, he's completely ripped. Yeah. But if you put two people side by side in clothes, you'd point to the fatter guy and go, that guy's stronger. Right. Or bigger or has right. more muscle or yep. whatever. Or even, I don't know if they'd say lower body fat percentage, but they'd say, they would just say he's jacked more than that guy. Mm-hmm. And they, like I said, then he takes his shirt off and he's like, yeah, it's like, whoa. Yeah. That guy's ripped. Exactly. But those small guys, they don't, you don't see it because they're not super, you know. They right. don't have the strong man look. Yep. Right. The strong men have got giant that. bellies, but they're just. Yeah, yep. they got that. Barely fit through the doorway. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, that's just some of that's genetics. And I mean, it is. Like that guy's never going to. He'd probably have to take the roids to get like super huge. Right. You know? And even then. Yeah. Even then DNA's, with clothes on, he's never going to be as. He's never going to be Arnold. DNA you know? is still eliminating. Yeah. A limiter. Exactly. I mean, like you said, he's not going to make the NBA anytime soon. Right. Crazy. All right. So I didn't even tell you I was going to do this, but I was going to, I, Joshua Lynn Koth, hereby challenge you, Dewey, Reginald Firestein. Reginald. John, Sam. I mean, <laughs> I, I can see where you get it mixed up. <laughs> to a cutting duel. From when to when. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Because I know you've been suffering the same as me, sort of plateaued out, got a little fat there for a minute, Mm -hmm. got off track on the diet. I I plateaued out like, you know, three, four months ago. I've just been hovering. I can't bust through, right? You need to to spice it up. I think I need some motivation. I need need to compete against somebody. I like it. And I, Josh Willenkoth, challenge you. Dwayne John. Dewey. Reginald <laughs> Firestein. Dewey John. <laughs> Dewey Cutting Duel. Here's what we're going to do. Did you watch the final duel or something on, TV, on the movie yet? <laughs> no. I want to go see that, by the way. We both go to MSU. Okay. We do the pod pod, the, the body in body scan. Pod pod, and the dunk, in body and the dunk. And do the average or, or the two lowest or whatever. Yep. Whatever we decide. And I don't want to know yours starting. You won't know mine. I'll like take the sheets and I'll scan them in or put them in a folder, hide them away. Oh, you won't even get them. I'll get mine. You'll get yours. Oh, right, right. Whatever. But then we could, on when we're doing this, we could do <laughs> for everyone else to see. Right. Yep. We could. And then uh, take a take like a shirtless picture in private. Don't show me. Yep. At the beginning. Shirtless front, side, and back. Right. Okay. Just relax, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Then Pick a de- predetermined amount of time, like eight weeks or 12 weeks or something, you know, whatever seems like a, a reasonable amount to achieve what like we want. 12, because then we don't have to, whatever we don't, have to, we don't have to be unhealthy about it. Right. What, then we can lose at the reasonable rate. Right. Okay. And then the final determiner will be percentage body fat dropped, meaning since you're already leaner than me. It's harder for you to get down a percent. Sure. Because if you're 10%, getting a nine is a 10% drop. Right. If I'm at 20 and I drop two, that's a 10% drop. So I have to drop two for every one you drop. Okay. Makes it fair. You lay this out on paper. Right. I agree to it right now. And I'm saying there's got to be something something at the end where oh. you don't want to lose. I'm saying 500 bucks. Ooh. <laughs> Because I can't lose 500 bucks. <laughs> I don't just starve yourself either. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not like you. I'm not going to go crazy animal insane. Uh, I, let's because 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 <laughs> if I put my head, if I put my head down and I have this super wicked training schedule coming up, there's got to be something on the line. Though. I know, but it's not fair to you. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> But let's do you, you fuckers hear that? <laughs> he's saying I don't have a chance is what he's saying. Well, I didn't say that. He's I saying I don't said, have a chance. I just said I have more at stake already to get this done than just the money. It's gotta be something humiliating. Oh shit. 
<laughs> so Money. I thought you were going to go easy, but you're like, no, it's got to be worse. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, but money to be, but to be determined. For me, five hundred bucks is you know, with three young kids, I can't well, be for filling sure. that around. Yeah, <clears throat> I get it. It's, there's got to be. I, you can't just be like, oh, I lost. Whatever. It's got to suck. Right. Right. It's got to suck. Okay. Well, you think on that to be determined, but let's shake on it. Let's oh, shake on absolutely. the premise. Oh, you feel like about a t- eighteen. <laughs> 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 okay. So your job, we're gonna call MSU. Yeah, we'll email. Game R Game tonight. We'll get, tr- try to get scheduled as soon as you can. And then after that day, the clock starts. And then we pick a time. We'll have our results locked in. Take your pictures. Then at the end, we'll, you know, and we can, you know, you can chat about how it's going and stuff as, as the weeks go by. But I don't want to know your numbers until the end. Okay. I think it'll be a good review. So, and it'll be cold in here. So we can just go like this, come in every week with our hands out like this. Right. And if, if, you're, if your six-pack is, is defined enough where it shows through the sweatshirt, then I know I'm in trouble. I'll just wear, like, <laughs> huge baggy shit. I like it. Right? Game on. Because I've just been, I feel like I'm just, I'm plateaued, I'm stagnating, I'm just, you know, kind of eating a little too much. Like you said, the difference between deficit Maintenance and bulk is so slim. You're talking like a 500 de- calorie range over from the, whole the top thing. to bottom, right? Right. So and some people eat I that need, when they just share a blizzard with their spouse. Exactly. <laughs> so I need you know to have that goal. That, and I know you're the same way. Yeah. You need that something, something chasing you or something to chase. All right, it's on, bitches. All right, we'll think so. It's on. It'll be fun. Okay, we're gonna wrap it up there. So uh, make sure you send us emails at info at fitandfurious.com. If you want to participate, go get your body fat checked. And Oh, dude, let's that, do that. that let's open awesome it up. If, yeah, if people would, would join in, if they want to try to do a cut with us, because let's be honest, all of you need to cut first, not bulk first. Yeah. We're, there, there's, <laughs> hey, all around the globe, there's offices right now having what kind of challenges? Not weight gain challenges. Huh? They're all weight loss challenges. Oh yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yep. All the joke. There's no bulking challenge. All the joke. <laughs> right. All the joke cubicles out there. All right. Make sure you watch on YouTube so you can see this happen in real time. Please subscribe. Also join us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, anywhere audio podcasts are found. Please subscribe, rate, review, and share. Support the show. Go to furiousmerch.com for t-shirts, and we will see you next week. We gotta go buy diuretics now. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>